Mission Zero was made in 1990 by Rocking Circles for the ZX Spectrum. They used their non-light gun game The Living Daylights and slapped light gun controls on top of it. The name Mission Zero can just be found on the tape. In the game itself, the loading screen and other references all say The Living Daylights. Most notable, the ending screen refers to the story arc of The Living Daylights rather than being adapted to Q's intro message, which came with the game on the same cassette and which I will play at the end of the review. Mission Zero is the third game of the James Bond action pack, which included a ZX Spectrum Plus to a microcomputer and other objects. In the game's story, the MI6 found out Spider's plan while James Bond was training with the new weapon, which he received in the game Q's armory, which I reviewed in episode 163. Spider intends to attack upcoming international peace talks and then wants to gain control over some unstable countries while the public is distracted. Luckily, the MI6 found the headquarters of Spider. Bond is sent to a one-man mission which should allow him to sneak inside without setting off an alarm. As the contents of the game weren't adapted whatsoever, the story of course isn't fitting at all. Q mentions that Bond should shoot everyone he encounters, while the game wants the player to use a paintball gun and tranquilizer darts, as it tightly follows the plot of the movie The Living Daylights. Mission Zero is a protection light gun game similarly to Guillermo Motel, Crossbow or the home version of Laser Ghost. What makes this game unique however is that the player controls Bond's movements by pressing the spacebar. Furthermore, the weapon can be changed to an alternative weapon or an item by shooting the bottom right corner of the screen. These objects are obtained in between levels. The player is presented four objects at a time and has five seconds to select one. Often one of the items will be of importance in the next level and the player has to find out which one by trial and error. The game consists of eight levels. A match of paintball against the British military. Streets in front of a theater. an industrial complex, the entrance to a mansion, a fair, a train, a military complex, and finally the private house of the main villain. The hit detection technically almost works the same way as in the other two games of the James Bond action pack. The main difference is that the screen flashes up for one frame in the beginning to allow the player to aim for the black bottom of the screen. In Mission Zero it's very difficult to hit certain objects as for the very small and seemingly misplaced hitboxes. This makes certain enemies and levels very frustrating. Especially the balloon shooting and the train level are very demanding. There are no continues and once the player dies, the game has to be started all over again. Mission Zero is incompatible to the ZX Spectrum 48K and ZX Spectrum plus 128K because of the fire play the game start screen. In my experience, just machines of the plus 3 type, such as the plus 2A and the plus 2B, are able to pass the screen. I don't own a genuine 1986 Grey Plus 2 machine to test and would love to hear your experiences in the comments. As of making this video, Mission Zero seems to be incompatible with all common ZX Spectrum emulators. Like the other games of the James Bond action pack, Mission Zero just accept light guns which connect to the BT auxiliary socket. The Cheetah Defender doesn't work well with the game. Mission Zero is my least favorite game of the James Bond action pack. It might be the best looking and sounding game of the bunch, but under the surface is a lazy, barely playable mess. Personally, I think Domark should have dropped the plan to make the story of the three games in the James Bond action pack overlapping. 
The idea is nice, but forcing three independent games together with too less of an effort is just plain embarrassing. Especially the Mission Zero's The Living Daylight score sticks out too much. That not even the text of the ending screen was changed is shocking. Maybe the hit detection is deliberately awful in order to artificially increase difficulty to ensure very few people will notice the lack of effort. Well done, 007. I knew you could do it. It's a nice weapon, isn't it? Well, you're gonna need it. While you've been on the firing range, we've uncovered what Spider is really up to. And it's far worse than we first thought. They're going to mount an all-out attack on the peace talks next month. In the confusion that follows, they'll seize military power in three of the world's most unstable countries. They'll hold the East, and the West to ransom. Overnight, they'll turn from being a counter-espionage organization to a major political power. Now, fortunately, we've located their headquarters, but it's fortified beyond belief. To avoid raising the alarm, you'll have to go in alone. I don't have to tell you how dangerous that's going to be. You must infiltrate their base swiftly and silently, shooting anybody who gets in your way before they have a chance to raise the alarm. Now, you're going to need every bit of the accuracy you've just demonstrated on the target range, and a bit more. Now, we don't quite know what you're going to find in there, but our sources say there are eight levels before you come face to face with their leader in his inner sanctum. You must use whichever of the gun's modes is most suitable for each situation. Get it wrong, and you're as good as dead. But you won't need the gun all the time. Grab whatever you find in there to get you to that final level. Right, now your mission briefing is waiting. Read it carefully, but don't waste time. The future of world peace depends on you. And James, I don't need to say it, but... Good luck. You'll need it. Stop the tape now and play the final section. This is the end of the review. My name is Ben. I thank you for viewing.